We're going to take a close look at the lock house and the area around it. Block 31. The lock was completed in 1833, so the lock house should date from the same time period. We do notice it's brick. We'll go up here and knock on the door and see if anyone answers. Doesn't sound like it, so let's take a look around. We're going to take a walk around the lock house and see what we find. One thing, we look down, we see there's a sidewalk here. Had a sidewalk in front of the house. Looking back at the brick, here it had an addition. Steps up to it. See an attic window. There was a door here. Looks like a cellar door on the side. Here's that sidewalk and it continues around. Looks like it's sealed up for now, but you can tell by the brick above it, there's an opening there. The soldiers are standing up. Brick on top of stone, stone foundation. There we get a little peek into there. There is an opening. So as we come around, some concrete there. See some of the stone. Well, you know, this may not be an addition. This is continuous stone, uh, continuous brick here. No line at all, so it was probably part of the original house. Here we had a porch. Take a look down it. We'll have to go up on the porch and knock on this door too. She wonder if anyone's home. Or at least they're not answering the door for us. Guess we'll have to move. Looking at this, I see the front door and to our left three windows, but there's a higher window to the right. As we look around the end of the house, we see a window on the ground level and two up high, which is probably like the attic level. This one's in the middle. Maybe it's a staircase. And they had a window there to let light in. So we'll finish our circle here see what else we see some repair work of course we see the brick is painted and then back to the beginning we're down into the canal bed now we're looking at the overflow we swing right and we'll be able to see the lock there's a mound of stone there between the uh, lock and the overflow. We'll swing here and look at the lock. Walk our way up to it. As we look at the berm side of the lock, the stonework, look at that narrow rock just fits right in there. When it comes over, we're going to see different things here. We see a notch there that I see writings about putting boards in to control the flow. As we get down here, we see the pocket for the gate and on down. We look to the right, we see mostly poured concrete. This lock was built on a wooden foundation and over time as it rotted, the walls would start leaning in. Well, they'd go and shave them down some so the canal boats would fit. Well, after a while, it finally collapsed and they had to rebuild it. They put some of the stone on the other side of the towpath and replaced this with concrete. As we look at this upper wall in the middle of the canal, where the water could just flow over it, it wouldn't tear down, tear the dirt down or wear it down. We look out through, we're not going to see a whole lot through this bed because of all the growth. 
But let's go back up on top. As we look at the stonework here at the overflow, we also see the overflow is poured concrete. So it's been replaced. From the overflow, we're looking up the canal a little bit. And right in this area is where there was a ditch to come over to this arch to provide the sawmill with water from the canal. Here up on top, we're looking at the concrete for the overflow and it was covered for a little ways. As we go out, it looks like that was cement block or concrete there. And then down it goes back to stone. We'll take a look at that. Coming down the overflow, we see at this point it's filled in with dirt, I guess for a crossing there. But at that point, we're seeing the stone again. We'll walk down here and look at said stone. And there's another mound to let people cross over. Then it goes back down again with stone on both sides, which is all dry stack stone. And we come to the end and there's a sill to protect the edge and it falls back into the canal. Now it looks like a pretty good sized basin here. We're up on top now looking at the overflow. We're going to swing over to the canal and it was stones all the way over. Poured the towpath on the lock. Looks like a lot of concrete over there. But over on this side, we see stonework. We're going to follow it down. Here's some impressions where there used to be metal here for the gate. You see the pocket here for the gate. We'll walk down this and see if we spot anything else. Swinging back, lock 31. Looking on the other side, still looks a lot like concrete. There's the gate pocket over there. At one time, there was a pivot bridge here for people to cross. And the turnpike, the Frederick, the Harpers Ferry Turnpike, complained that people were coming here, crossing the canal, walking up the canal to Harpers Ferry and not paying their toll. So the outcome of that was they locked it open when it wasn't in use. So this could have been a crossover there. I don't really think this is one of their crossovers because how would water get through for the overflow? This out perched on the stonework all coiled up. See that snake? Right there in the middle. Probably enjoying the heat of the day. We'll leave them alone and move on. Walking through all this brush, I kind of wondered when I'd see a snake. Well, I guess that was it. We're looking back toward the overflow. We're going to look right and look at the rock. Seems to go around this because I see some stone work over there. I guess to help make this basin. Looked over to get a better look at this stone work. And it seems to end right there and just go back into dirt. Here we are looking down the canal. From the overflow, we looked down and we found something. Not sure what this is, but it's brick and it's got a piece of black pipe in it. Some kind of brickwork. It comes to here. A little rectangle shaped. I think that's odd being in the canal bed. I moved over and this is looking from the waste weir toward the river at this big stone wall. Then we see over here it connects up with the lock. You see the difference in the stonework. These are all dressed out where 
these here are pretty rough. So we moved over so we can get a better look at the stonework. That's into the mouth of the canal. We'll look toward the other side. I don't know if we'll see anything. In a little bit, we might be able to see some of that stonework. As the canal boats come out of the lock and proceed downstream, here on the left side is a berm of stone and dirt. The idea of this was to line the canal boats up before they entered the lock so they wouldn't hit the lock. But to the left of this berm was, would have been flooded. That's that basin, that's where the overflow is going. We look down into the canal bed, we can see water is running out of the lock and headed downstream. Look over here and see some more ripples. The way back out, I look over where the snake was. I see it's gone. So is that kind of scary or what? It's around here somewhere. I'm looking at the canal walls on the towpath side. We'll walk down that and see what we see. Standing up here on top, we can see the gate pocket on the other side. Swing over here, we can see where it was. We see the metal work for the gate. Looking down into the bed of the lock, we can see the water down there does have a flow. Let's walk down and see what else we can spot. There was a bridge here. We're wondering, a pivot bridge. We're wondering if we're going to see something. Looking in the canal, the stone on the other side looks pretty good. Walking back down here, we're coming to the next gate. See the concrete gate pocket here. There's a corresponding stone one on the other side. This has a lot of metal work left. Look at that. Comes down, up and over. This one runs down. Cool. Let's look on down here. Looking over the edge, we can see some of the original stonework, and then the concrete comes over. On this side, we still see some stones, some of the original stones that were left from the lock. Here on the river side of the towpath, we see stones that were moved from the old lock over, and it's suspected they used a crane to move it all over here another pile of that stone. This was the old lock wall. Here we are looking at the lock house, lock 31. Looking down here from below the lock you can see that channel that goes down with that little berm on the other side and then there would have been water beyond it. We can see a pretty good flow here. Then right down from the lock, within the lock area, is a mile marker. Mile marker 58. Then we'll swing and you can see where we're at. There's the lock. And beyond that vegetation is the lock. In the 1830s, a pivot bridge was built here across the lock. And it was mainly for the workers to get to the Weaverton Mills. 